Hello world, welcome to Babylon is Burning, a talk show in which we focus on contemporary issues related to digital culture. And today we focus in our maiden issue on globalization, globalism and online culture. Welcome, my name is Marieke van der Abelen and today we talk about globalism, globalization and digital culture. And in order to do that we have invited a special guest today and this is Jan Blomaert. Welcome Jan. Hello Marieke. So Jan, I don't know if you've seen our, um, our introduction screen, so I'm hoping you are not too warm. Uh, it, is, it is hot. It is hot. But then it's burning. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. So you're an expert on uh, the topic of globalization and globalism. So for me, the difference between globalization and global globalism is not entirely clear, but we've um, selected a clip that will hopefully clarify things. We will never surrender America's sovereignty to an unelected, unaccountable global bureaucracy. America is governed by Americans. We reject the ideology of globalism, and we embrace the doctrine of patriotism. Around the world, responsible nations must defend against threats to sovereignty, not just from global governments, but also from other new forms of coercion and domination. I have to say, it's a pretty good speech for Trump, right? Indeed, he's very, he's, well, yeah. He's vocal, but here at least is very, very clear. And eloquent. Very. Yeah. What stands out here, here is the, the use of globalism. So he proclaims the end of the ideology of globalism. And the first thing we need to know is that globalism has very little to do with globalization, actually. At least, you know, the two should never be confused. But what I notice in a lot of, uh, uh, let's say, observation and analysis about the issue of globalism is that exactly that confusion is very prominent. Okay, but th then then help me out. What is yeah. globalization? Well, Maybe globalization we can start is with easy that to term. Define. Globalization itself is a, a range of uh, uh, observable phenomena that have to do with interconnectedness in uh, across regions in the world. Uh, at the economic level, the political level, the material level, immaterial level, also you know, the culture communication and so on and so on. So that is uh, an objective thing, let's say. So right? it's like a process where yeah. we organize things more globally. Exactly, yeah. And in which you would see increasing integration between different segments of the world. Uh, in the sense, you know, that for instance, we're now exposed to uh, um, music from, from Asia, from Japan, Korea and so on and so on and vice versa. Uh, now, all of this is driven by a new technology, new technology which is the, the online world, actually. Uh, but here, you know, the issue is globalization is very, very clear. Globalism, however, is a word that is relatively new, mm -hmm. so we haven't really heard it. Uh, and Trump positions it in opposition to patriotism, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so if you look for the meaning of the word, it's really hard to to actually locate it uh, in the sense of a dictionary. So it wouldn't be, I would not be able to say globalism is X, Y, Z. No, it isn't. Um, but there is a strong suggestion. I mean, of course, this is political discourse we're listening to, mm -hmm. right? And vagueness, as we know, strategic vagueness is an element of, uh, of any political, you know, tradition of rhetoric. Uh, so you use words of which people believe that they understand them or have a very clear resonance while in fact they remain underdefined. I think about you know the way in which we use our economy, our democracy, freedom, mm -hmm. economic growth and so on and so on. All of these are underdefined, relatively vague words. Globalism is one of them. But so you think that Trump uses this the vagueness of this term deliberately? 
to obtain a strategic adv advantage. Absolutely. And uh, does yeah. he then also, because he could have used the word globalization, yeah. but he uses the word globalism. So what drives him to make, make particularly that choice? It has an entirely different range of, uh, of resonances. I already said the globalization is identifiable. It's easy to, to, to locate it, to, uh, uh, let's say, even observe it. Would you say it's politically neutral? As a term? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's a matter of fact. It's a, it's a state of the world, let's say. But globalism uh, essentially always has three dimensions. All right, it is always negative, uh, so you never use it as um, a thing that you endorse. It is used as, as a negative instrument, and it has basically three dimensions. One is, it is always against any form of diversity like, you know, uh, migration, but even at the level of gender and of sexuality. That's one dimension. The second dimension is it is against all forms of global governance, like, you know, the system of international organizations that emerged after the Second World War with the UN, NATO, the EU, and so on. And then thirdly, it is outspokenly anti-left. So if you look for the meaning of, of globalism, that's more or less what we can say about it. So when Trump uses the ideology of globalism, yeah. we could sort of replace that with the ideology of the left. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it is, it, it's good stuff, you know. It's, it, it's a really good word, politically speaking, uh, in the sense that I mean, it's very handy, it's very useful, right? You don't actually need to mention the word nationalism. So you don't actually need to mention your own agenda here. Mm -hmm. You can basically suggest clarity about the agenda of the other. And would you say that the word own. nationalism post World War Has cannot be used anymore yeah. because of that connotation? Yeah, well, it, it, it always has uh, a legacy, of course. Uh, so mm. these words come with a history of use and abuse. And nationalism, of course, may bring you back to like the ethnic wars in the early 90s in uh, the Balkans, in Africa, and so on and so on. So it's, it's not a word we want. Note that he, in his particular speech here, also did not use nationalism. He used patriotism. Mm -hmm. So, all right, we're patriots. That sounds a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, but the interesting thing is globalism is new as, as a word, or at least it's new when spoken by very senior politicians like Trump. However, uh, in the online world, notably in the meme wars that have been going on for several years and we've been observing them and analyzing them and so on, in the meme wars, it had been around for quite a while. It had acquired, you know, very clear currency there. And maybe we could have a look at some memes. Yes, sure. I believe you have brought some. So let's take a look after a commercial break. Every step online leaves digital footprints. We create a digital self. Today, cultures and societies are shaped by digitalization and globalization. We send chat messages, artists expand their work to vlogging, and we're connected with different people, places, and cultures 24 seven. During our program, Online Culture, you study culture in this digitalizing and globalizing world. Digitalization influences the shape of communication and cultural products. We have always changed and changed our behavior according to the context we find ourselves in. What is new about digital environments is that now we can crop, filter, Photoshop, and in other ways edit our self-representation. Graduate as an independent thinker who will be essential for tomorrow's job market. Visit our campus, www.tilburguniversity.edu. Welcome back to Babylon is Burning, in which we talk about globalism with Jan Blomaert. And Jan, you have selected some memes for us. Uh, maybe you can first clarify what a meme is, because it's an odd word. Yeah, and, and in many ways it, uh, it's, it's a new element and a very major element in the new political environment that's both online and offline. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what, we, what we all know, I think, and all of us have been involved in it, or at, at least have been exposed to it, is a meme culture which is a visual 
mixture of an image and a message, words, all right, that actually is an entirely new genre of online communication, of human communication in general, and is very frequently used to bring you very strong messages, very polarized and outspoken messages, uh, due to that interaction between words, the message, let's say, and then the image that is the thing that has to clarify that message. Okay. Um, and in the field of globalism, uh, globalism, of course, is, is a way of defining your enemy. So the memes that we will see are heavily, uh, almost black and white memes. Okay, so let's have take a look. At a look. First. Yep. So almost literally here, uh, uh, globalism, what we are said it is, and that is the sort of rosy world of diversity and everyone's friends and, you know, mm -hmm. and we all love each other and how great it is. Uh, and it's literally black and white here. Eh? Uh, what it really is, is a world of uh, shadowy figures whom we don't know. Okay. And they rule us, they rule the world. And if and I may pitch in, what we see here is also, it this piggybacks on, we've, we've had lots of these memes oh going yeah. on, yeah. Um, what it means to be a teacher, you exactly. know, what yeah. it really is. Yeah. So yeah. it's a reproduction Absolutely. of that yeah. same theme, yeah. but now it's politically motivated. Yeah. And, uh, it would be a feature of memes, you know, that they're always in a way recognizable. Mm -hmm. uh, so it would always ring a bell. And in that sense, the connection with other, let's say, genres of memes here is obvious and is very productive. Mm -hmm. But here, I mean, now, of course, what you see here is an attack to, uh, an attack on, on global governance. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're not ruling ourselves, which is exactly what Mr. Trump says. And we want to rule ourselves. America shall be ruled by Americans, whereas now it's ruled, or at least that's the suggestion, by shady figures, non-elected, whom we don't know. Mm -hmm. Another association, and, and I also uh, identified it, is migration, diversity, and whatever uh, may fall under that umbrella. And so here again, you see a very simple opposition, nationalism, happy, beautiful people, you know, uh, uh, sharing the, uh, the spirit of uh, joy about who they are. Okay, mm -hmm. as opposed to a dark world. So again, you see black and white here, a dark world made dark by these immigrants. Mm -hmm. right? Now, note, of course, that uh, uh, globalism being a very vague word uh, has these orientations, but all sorts of other things can be brought in. I already mentioned feminism, uh, you know, gender issues that have to do with new forms mm -hmm. of sexuality and gender identification. So it so sounds as if it's like a conservative term. Yeah on which you can basically hook every yeah. theme that exactly, yeah. uh, oppose yeah. in which you oppose yeah. exactly. progressive elements with yeah. uh, conservative elements. And so you see it here. This is a lineup. So you see Mr. Trump, obviously, and then you see a lineup uh, in which, well, of course, we all are able to identify Obama, uh, Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, and a number of others. But I would like to focus my attention here on this gentleman there, Mr. Shorosh. Mm -hmm. Who's holding a, a bag a of... A very big bag of money. money. A very big bag of money. And mm -hmm. so here you see one of the nasty dimensions of globalism. All right? It opposes itself overtly to a world of um, undemocratic decision-making by unelected uh, you know, organisms and so on and so on. UN, NATO, EU, but also to Ident uh, to, to individuals like Mr. Soros, mm -hmm. who run NGOs and who are basically de delocalized. All right? yeah. He's Hungarian, but also American, and what he does is global, so he's all over the world. Mm -hmm. And he's Jewish, so one of the very frequent associations we see in the context of globalism is, or at least anti-globalism, is very often also not just anti-diversity and anti-feminism, but also anti-Semitism. Okay, and so would you say that also the connotation here with the big bag of money, like the Jew carrying the big bag of money, is a reproduction of what we've seen yeah. in earlier uh, cultural productions? Almost literally. And, and indeed, but I'm not showing these memes, but there are other memes in which you would see representations of uh, Jewish people that are almost direct references to the 30s. Okay. So they look identical to the sort of, of imagery that was produced the context of Nazi Germany. But can I ask a critical question? Um, so globalism is used to uh, counter this idea of um, globalized governance, but aren't we currently in an era in which 
the world is governed by corporations rather than politicians? That's that's the that's the interesting thing. And here, well, here global corporations. Here we have globalization. These people, people like Mr. Trump, but uh, just to point out, just a few days ago, the new government in Brazil also proclaimed exactly the same thing: the mm -hmm. end of globalism and the return to our own roots, and so on and so on with exactly the same figures also being identified, the uh, UN, uh, also transnational arrangements like trade agreements and what have you. Uh, but all of them are very deeply, very deeply and very actively involved in real hard globalization. Mr. Trump is a, or used to be before he became president, an international, a global businessman. All right? Mm -hmm. uh, None of these people will ever be heard saying that they're against international trade. On the contrary, what Mr. Trump is actually saying is, we want to make our own trade deals. Now think of Brexit, it's exactly the same thing. Right? No one's against globalization, globalization is great and good, but we have a word you know, that we in some way latch on to globalization, and it, uh, in a way, you know, stands for everything that's wrong about it, mm -hmm. right? So we need uh, to separate the economics yeah. from culture and let's say the, the pillar stones of yeah. our society, yeah. the family yeah. and uh, education. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and of course, here is another, uh, let's say, irony. When we speak about meme wars, uh, those are global phenomena. The memes we see here, you know, were produced in the United States, but you know, they go viral all, all over the world. Uh, so they, they don't stay in one place. So what we see here is that in the attack against globalism, the very instruments of globalization are being used all the time. Okay, to achieve globalism. Uh, to achieve, or at least to attack globalism, yeah. We'll talk a little bit more about this after a commercial break. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm talking to Jan Blomaert about globalism and you have just explained to me that globalism is an umbrella term and I've read in one of your articles on Digit magazine that another concept that you place under this umbrella is cultural Marxism. But yeah. what is cultural Marxism? Um, nothing. It's, 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 it's a label again. It's an umbrella term it's an with umbrella an umbrella term. term. Within an umbrella. Um, the, idea, the idea is as follows, all right, that, that in the 1920s, 1930s to 40s and so on and so on, you had the Frankfurt School and you had Gramsci, all right, who started the idea that in order to build a socialist revolution, you had to work from the viewpoint of culture. So you had to build a socialist culture and a, a, socialist, uh, a revolution would follow from that. Um, and again, this notion of Marxism, cultural Marxism, has been fully incorporated in these meme wars. Hundreds, if not thousands, of memes are articulating that notion. And like we can see here, here you see very, very clearly the umbrella, all right? Uh, what we see here is a reference to cultural Marxism mm -hmm. that actually includes almost everything. Mass immigration, racial uh, integration, interracial marriage, gay rights, gay adoption, pedophilia, best bestiality, necrophilia, and so on, and so on, and the Jew, and right? So here again you see a re-articulation of very old images that go back to the 1920s, 1930s, you know, early Nazism, later also under Stalin, the Soviet Union, they have the same set of, of ideas, that is the Jews, who by their very nature are not national, 
they're not from here. They're always diasporic, and in that sense, they are global, all right? And behind globalism, there is the idea that the Jews are trying to reorganize our, our world, all right, by undermining our traditional values that have to do with, uh, you know, gender, with sexuality, with uh, relationships within the family, like authority relationships, uh, man-woman relationships, uh, the superiority of men versus women, and so on and so on. It's all a Jewish, uh, a, a Jewish plot. Okay. okay, but then would you say that there is also a counterculture, a meme counterculture, that endorses the cultural Marxist view? Uh, there is a little bit of that, of course. You know, there is there is a sort of uh, um, an appropriation, like you very often have, in which a negative label is appropriated as a sort of. Uh, uh, um, a banner, a banner for action, okay? But given the emptiness of the notion of cultural Marxism, it's very, very hard to identify with it. Mm. Uh, so in that sense, you know, w whenever it's used in a more productive way, in a way of saying, okay, we are cultural Marxists, but we stand for this and that and that and that, it actually uh, remains marginal within that sphere of memes and uh, meme, meme warfare. But then how should we counteract if we want to counteract this evolution? How can we intervene in these processes? Um, as an academic, my, my answer would always be by analysis, by, by, by analyzing not just you know, the factual foundations of the notion of cultural, was there ever a cultural Marxism and so on. Did uh, Adorno destroy Western culture, Western values and so on? It's very hard to support, but even more, an analysis of the way in which these, these words are used, right? these very notions, even if they're empty, even if historically they are complete uh, you know, nonsense, uh, even so they appear to be very, very functional and very effective. And I think in the field of the study of online culture, that's exactly what we want to understand. How come that these empty labels all right, have such effects? But then, is it realistic? that a scholar who will always lean towards seeking the nuance and the complexity and the context, is it realistic that such a message can ever have the same impact as a, a populist statement or a populist claim? My, my usual answer to that is uh, not always, not on any topic, and not uh, in relation to everybody. So you will always have an effect, or at least you will be heard as an academic doing this analysis by a number of people, all right, on a number of issues, all right, and in a number of uh, circumstances as well that are conducive to being heard. But isn't that preaching to the choir? Uh, which is one of the reasons why we do Babylon's Burning. It's a way of bringing it, you know, maybe to new audiences. Okay. And so does Jan Blomaert occasionally lie awake at night thinking, maybe I am wrong? <laughs> all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How about you? Uh, oh, I, I never lie awake. I <laughs> okay. sleep like a baby. I cry okay. every two hours. <laughs> Thank you all for watching Babylon is Burning. This was our maiden episode, but we hope to welcome you in the future. And one of our new episodes will definitely be very interesting to you as we will focus on trolls. We will talk about them and perhaps we will also talk with them. News team, I'm Veronica Corningstone. And I'm Ron Burgundy. Go fuck yourself, San Diego. <laughs>